So we move to the next uh, speaker. Uh, we will have a, a talk from Svetlana. Svetlana, oh, I can see you. I recognize a nice laser alignment behind you. <laughs> okay, so uh, can you hear us well? Yes, we can hear you well. Perfect. Okay, so it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Svetlana Starikovskaya, uh, who is uh, talking uh, on her behalf, but also on the behalf of her daughter, uh, Tatiana. Uh, Starikovskaya, uh, uh, who is also a scientist, and uh, uh, it's really a pleasure to have uh, Svetlana with us today. I would love to have her in person at Chaos, but she already visited us. So uh, she she's a, a scientist in uh, plasma physics, and uh, we are working in uh, in close field. So it's a, she's a closed colleague, and uh, I'm really looking forward for her talk on this topic. Thank you, Svetlana. Thank you, Diana. I'm trying to share the screen. Can you see my presentation now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank Diana for Diana for inviting me. Diana is a longtime colleague and friend. And uh, let's be honest, ladies. When the first time Diana asked me, I hesitated a lot. Uh, when Diana told me, okay, Svetlana, I know your daughter is a scientist. Can you please tell to the ladies your personal opinion of how to be a mother and a scientist? Then my answer was yes. And that's all what I'm going to share with you now, underlining that that's my personal experience and maybe experience of some of my closer colleagues. I will mention them. So as Dana mentioned, we have two co-workers here, two co-authors. My daughter, Tatiana or Tanya Storikovska, who was born in 1987. She is now associate professor in the Talgo laboratory team, uh, which means theory, algorithm, graphs, and optimization at the computer science department of Ecole Normale Supérieure here in Paris, France. And her scientific interests are so far away from my scientific interests that I understand mainly the propositions. She is working with algorithms on strings, small space algorithms, and data structures, streaming algorithms, property testing algorithms, law bounds, and communication complexity. Uh, before she installed in France, she was graduated from Moscow State University. She received a PhD also from Moscow State University. She working as a, as a, worked as assistant professor in computer science department at Moscow High School of Economics. And then in 2015, she moved to Bristol, then to Paris as postdoc researcher. And finally, in 2017, she has got a permanent position at the Ecole Normale Supérieure. She, she moved to Paris. And yes, this is my happiness, honestly. And well, today I will be speaking as a mother, but actually I'm a leading researcher in French Academy of Science in Scenario starting from uh, 2010. I'm teaching at the Cole Polytechnique Paris. I'm teaching bachelor at Cole Polytechnique Applied Physics class, which is class of 50 students this year boys, girls from everywhere in the world. And my interests are, yes, Diana, you well notice it, it's experimental alignment attention of my postdoc, ex-postdoc, because he's now a professor in Singapore, Tat Lung Chang. And my interests are experimental physics of strongly non-equilibrium low temperature plasmas, kinetic of excited species, combustion, non-equilibrium gas flows. And I try to develop advanced laser diagnostic because simply I have a great fun from this. I was born a long time ago in 66. I graduated from Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. I have got PhD from the same university and Doctor of Science degree from Joint Institute for High Temperature in Moscow. I was a professor of Department of Molecular and Biological Physics. Uh, I left 
Russia and Moscow in this position in 20H, having a research scientist position at Laboratory of Plasma Physics, uh, which is joint laboratory of Sinaresa Cold Polytechnique and a few more institutes. And starting from 2010, I'm at permanent position of director or directrice de recherche in French Academy of Science. Luckily for me, guys, it is so just my experience. Um, I was never punished for the fact I'm a woman or a young girl or a lady. And uh, I would say that my colleagues, men, always helped me. And uh, this was always constructive and very positive collaboration. I'm a leader of scientific group in France, scientific group is between of three and 10 persons, let's say, between them are postdocs, internship students, uh, PhD students. As far as we're in physics, uh, they are mainly gentlemen. Sometimes I have ladies. I'm happy to have ladies in my group. And I would like to say that I'm rather fine professionally. And so my story today will be about the other item, which I believe is very important. My daughter told me, mom, I always knew that I could, and I always knew that this is normal. Actually, it was a pleasure for me to communicate to her knowing, you see her photo here when she was only six years old, uh, she always knew that she can go to science simply because her mom is doing this. And I have heard the same idea from the daughters of my colleague, who you see here on the photo. It's the same idea. I always knew that I could, and I always knew that this is normal. And my colleague is Marie-Claire Scheine-Klein, who works here at the Kohl Polytechnique at Laboratory of Optical Biophysics. Uh, she works in fantastically interesting field, field connecting femtosecond lasers and study of biological tissue. She is from the lab, which has permanent publication somewhere in nature because it's really on the edge. And um, she has a medal from Cineres and she has two daughters. At the left, you see Domitil daughter of Marie-Claire, who just defended a PhD in physics in nanophotonics in Université de Paris this December, last December, and who studied before in Institute Optique and at Imperial College London. And on the right-hand side, you see Gabrielle. Uh, she's the third year, last year here in France, PhD, at the interface between chemistry and biology. And she studied at the Cote Supérieure de Physique de Chimie Industrielle in Paris. Again, I want to turn the line. Uh, in the families like our family, we consider this like normal if our daughters just simply follow our way, as maybe in any families when kids follow the parents. And I wanted to speak a little bit, my idea how to bring up your children. You see my photo back to 91. I was a PhD student. Uh, Tanya was already there and I was waiting for my second daughter. Before I do this, I just wanted to mention that I have six kids. For my kids, which were born, I'm their mother biologically and not only biologically and uh, for adopted kids from my second marriage. And so I think I have a right to speak as a physicist and as a mother. And I was asked one day, uh, by my colleagues. Okay, Svetlana, how to bring up your children? What is your point of view? And it's that day I made this presentation. So I will just pass it quickly. My idea that for any children, children of physical scientists, people, or any children, it's important that children have help their parents. This is like game, but this is like. It's important that parents are together with their kids. It's important that parents are together with the kids in different situations and that parents share their love, their passion. 
including physics or chemistry or biology with their kids. Because growing up like this, you give to your kids the idea that this is a part of them naturally. To give them food, like any parents, and to give them impressions. To understand them, it's important. To divide their interests, not necessarily physics. It can be music. It can be anything else. To smile with them. Whatever happens in the world, to smile with them. To allow them to take care about the others and to encourage them. And finally, to love them. I would like to say that new generation is coming. Actually, why my daughter Tatiana is not present today with her permission, I show these two photos because she's taking care about her baby now. And we hope, looking at the right photo, that maybe this young lady, whose name is Mira, will also one day decide to be a scientist. But also what I wanted to tell you, and this is important, as for my taste, that if your kid say, I don't wish to be a scientist, it's also normal. My younger daughter, my younger biological daughter, Olga, she finished six year of master in biophysics at Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. And uh, one day she came home, it's her drawing, and uh, told us, mom, dad, I don't want to be a physicist. I don't want it to be a biologist. I wanted to illustrate the books for children. It's not easy when your kid come after six years of successful study in biology, where you see the perspectives, where you know the perspectives and say, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. But what is important is to trust to your kids. And here, let me present a few illustrations for the Biomethods in Pictures, it was a calendar which uh, was published in Russia in 2018 and has got a prize of Russian Academy of Science for the illustration. It's only two pages for microscopy and proteomic, but all, all months were illustrated by one scientific paper, young researchers organized and prepared this and by illustrations of my daughter. And here is her short CV. You see that she is a winner of a lot of recent international level awards. She illustrated a few books. And uh, I am absolutely proud to tell you that, for example, her last book, which is The Travel of the Swallow, Le Grand Voyage de Mirandel, uh, has to be published in six countries. The first country was France. It was in French, like it is here on the slide. Then it was Russia. Then it was Germany. There should be England, Taiwan, and China. We are waiting now. And I am absolutely proud by her career and her way to go. As I told you, I'm happy mom of six kids. Tatiana and Olga, they are my Russian kids. And I have four French kids, Alice, Nicola, Camille, and Gail. And I love all them. And believe me, it's my deep opinion is that it is a happiness to combine quite intense job in physical laboratory and to have my family, to have my kids. And I would never pay uh, saying, okay, I just do science. I will not be a mother, I will not have kids. No, no. And uh, for me, one of the messages, which maybe I would like to pass to the community, one of real help, um, society in any countries can do for ladies is to help them to be at the same time 
a mother and a scientist. It, it is linked to organizing of taking care about kids, organizing of taking care about homework, etc., etc., etc. There are different methods to do this, but actually I think it's fantastically important. And the second thing which is important is to say to young ladies that, you know, you should not select between your family and your job. You should and you can have both and to be happy with this, to realize yourself both as mother and as scientist. They are for me like two unseparated parts of my life. And I'm absolutely proud about this. And I'm sincerely thankful for my two husbands, the first one, my ex-husband and my husband now, for the possibility to be in the family, to be with my kids, to grow up them and to be happy from how great adult people are they now. And I also understand, and I wanted to finish my brief talk by a few very important for me slides. This all comes for sure from the family. I selected only a few photos with my family, but they are peculiar photos. And it is a big reason to show you these photos now. The reason is that you saw in my CV, I have got education at Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. The majority of my life was in Russia. I am Russian. I grew up in Ukraine. Here on the slides, you see the slides with my father, who is now 78 years old. And with my Ukrainian relatives, I love deeply. My heart is between these two countries. You know what disaster happens now in the world. These three slides are taken from my native city, a small city near Nikolaev on the south of Ukraine. This is called Bashtanka. I was happy to grow up there. I was happy to visit my dad every year. Fortunately, I saw him. Just in the beginning of February, I was in Ukraine. I wanted to tell you, ladies, they are the photos of the last week. I almost cannot speak about this, but this is the truth. I will tell you more. In Russia, people have Facebook forbidden now. In Russia, the information is wrong and people may have from three to 15 years to prison if they say it is wrong. I would like to represent you my excellent friend since university time in Moscow, Nana Vaitenko. She is biologist in neuroscience. She is doctor of biological science. She grew up in Azerbaijan, in Baku. She worked for 15 years in the US. And then, like 10 to 15 years ago, she came to Ukraine, where part of her family was from, to work in Kiev. Facebook is not forbidden in the external world. If you go to Facebook of Nana Voitenko, who is in Ukraine now, there you will see the truth. And I'm not here for political speech, but simply I wanted to share with you my pain, my feelings, and I sincerely, as all the women and all the mothers of the world, wanna that the war stops. I finish with this, ladies. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, Svetlana. If you have any questions, we have still four minutes, if I understand correctly, of my time. 
Do we have any question from the audience? Okay, so I will start. Uh, you... Sorry, okay, there are some technical problems. Okay, so uh, in... Uh, in um, just to have an idea, so you raise your two biological daughters uh, in... Uh, Say in Russian and French. <laughs> Yeah. To my Russian daughters, okay. <laughs> so you you raise your two Russian daughters in in Russia. Uh, one right. became a scientist. The other one became uh, an artist. Um, where when they were young younger, were you able to predict that, or were you surprised by this no. final choice no. in their? their uh, well, we never started to bring our daughters to be that or that person. Uh, my personal opinion, because uh, while it was tradition at the time, at my time when I was a kid, uh, to try to give to kids both technical education and artistic education. So my kids were in quite serious school on physics and mathematics, but at the same time, you saw from the slide, they were playing violins and they went to musical school. And... Uh, the selection of my younger daughter to be an artist was her spontaneous selection. When she finished musical school, she came to see me and told me, Mom, now I want her to learn <laughs> the drawing, please. And uh, she, had, she was 15 years old. I did not know how to do this. I did not know how to find the place, the good place for her. So I asked all the people I can, and I found for her a good place and started from there. She started this, her career. She hesitated where to go. Finally, she decided to go to biophysics and she changed her opinion one more time six years later. As for elder one, Tatiana, from the very beginning, she was fascinated by mathematical world because of very strong education at their school, which is important. And she followed this from the beginning up to now. Okay. Yeah, there is a question here. Hello, uh, this is Khulut Khatib, and thank you very much for this very inspiring uh, story. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed uh, about all your achievements as a scientist, established scientist, uh, as an established mother, established wife, and a daughter. And here I want to stop and ask you, did you feel at some point that you have limited time for yourself how did you practice self-care from where you got all that energy to move on in all these directions with success uh thank you very much for your question because actually when i was younger uh it's many times that i was uh, you know, saying myself that maybe i'm a bad mother because i wanted to have more time for my kids and maybe I'm a bad scientist because I wanted to have more time for my science. And there is only 24 hours by day and I cannot do this more. Um, I don't know how to answer this question shortly, but actually, fortunately for me, all the time I was able, I was with my kids. I used every minute to play with them, to explain them something. And um, I tried also to be with my students all the time. Uh, and yes, again, I felt myself guilty, but fortunately, and I can tell you this now, when my elder daughter is 33 years old, my younger Russian daughter is 30, and my youngest French kid is 21, uh, that fortunately, whatever you are doing, if you are sincere, and if kids see you working, and if you are not even every minute available for them, but they know that a minute you can, you will be there, they understand this. And they appreciate this. I don't know if I'm honest. Okay, thank you very much. I think it's time to conclude. So uh, thank you very much, Tatlana. I really appreciate the effort that you have made. We know that, uh, I know that this is a really difficult time for you. 
Uh, and I really appreciate that uh, you took the time to share with us uh, this, uh, this story, this inspiring story. And uh, uh, I hope everything will be fine for, for you and, uh, and for the loved one. Uh, everyone. Thank you very much, Diana, for saying this. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. So good luck to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So it's now time to take a short break and uh, we'll start again at uh, uh, 3.15 Saudi time. <laughs>